I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey everyone, hope you guys had a great week. I'm gonna open us up in prayer, so let's get to it. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much uh, for saving us and for uh, loving us, Lord, uh, and for sending your Son to die on the cross for our sins. Uh, I can't begin to express how thankful and grateful I am for that, Lord. Uh, and I just pray that we can all reflect and learn from this sermon uh, and to live it out and apply uh, what we learn here today. Uh, in all of his name I pray, amen. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys next week or, uh, yeah, <laughs> in the future. Bye, everyone. Hey, guys. Primary and Junior fam. Hope you guys have all been doing well. I'm your worship leader, Ben, and today we are joined by our lovely dance master, 6050, John Beek. Uh, before we begin, we are slowly transitioning from March to April, and during this time, let us not forget that almost 2,000 years ago, this is when um, Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for our sins, right? But the Jewish people, they had an entirely different view of what Jesus was coming down for. They thought he was this great warrior that came to save the Jewish people from the grafts of the Roman Empire. But Jesus did so much more. He saved not only the Jewish people, but the world from uh, sin, right? From eternal death. So that being said, uh, let us start off with the song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, to remind us why Jesus came down. It was for our sins. And why for our sins? And why did he come down to die? because he loves us. Simple as that. Okay, let's start. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. Cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. 
my debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high Good job, everybody. So the next song we are going to sing together is Come By Fount. It uses, uh, I guess, an older form of English, but it is a very classic song. And if you don't know it, you should ask your parents because they probably know it. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get into it. Come thy found. Come thy found of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious honor sung by playmates. Tongues above, praise the mountain, fix upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Interposed His precious blood Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger, interpose his precious blood. And with that concludes our worship session for today. Uh, it is a bit shorter, but I hope you guys took a lot out of it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Um, I'll continue praying for all, for you all, and hopefully we can see each other again. Okay, take care, guys. Bye. Happy Sunday, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, today is a special Sunday. Do you know what Sunday it is today? What type of Sunday? Well, if you said Palm Sunday, you're absolutely correct. Today is Palm Sunday, and today we celebrate uh, where Jesus entered Jerusalem as uh, the king who will bring peace and salvation between us and God. And it marks a day where we will enter uh, Passion Week or uh, a week where we reflect upon the sufferings of Christ, which will then lead up to Good Friday and, East, and then finally Easter Sunday. And I hope we can take today to, uh, especially this week as well, to really reflect on what Christ has done for us. Uh, his suffering, his uh, death on the cross, his resurrection, ascension, and how all that relates to uh, us being forgiven of our sins and finding new life in Christ. And that not only can we reflect on that, but also just respond to it by giving thanks today, praying to God, saying thank you, and asking forgiveness, um, and just living a life of, that will just worship God this week, uh, and hopefully every week, but especially this week. And so now, before we jump into the sermon, uh, we're going to just go into announcements. Uh, today, again, is Palm Sunday. And then uh, after Palm Sunday, we have Good Friday coming up. 
And Good Friday is going to be either in person, uh, if you can register online or if your parents can register uh, on either the Young Nuck or the COA websites. Uh, it'll be in person or it'll be family worship, right? There will not be a separate children's worship for Good Friday. However, on Easter Sunday, we will have a separate children's worship service. I know last year we didn't, but this year we're going to have one, a separate one. And during that service, uh, we're going to have uh, just a, something a little special from the teachers, uh, deacons, and the Kwanzaa names of our department just to share with you. Uh, on that Easter Sunday service uh, video for all of you. Also, just want to remind you of your Bible studies. Uh, you know, just click show more and again, click the appropriate tabs to get to your Bible study. Awana will continue on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. If you need, if, if it's your first time, you need the information, just message, uh, email me or message me and I'll be able to send you the Zoom information. Uh, and also, just another Awana announcement is that on uh, April 14th, Awana will be taking a break on April 14th, Wednesday, April 14th. There will be no Awana on that day uh, because uh, we're supposed to take a break on March break, but then it got pushed to April or the second week of April. And so April 14th, we're going to be taking that break. And then finally, uh, we would love to have you be a part of our service with either reciting the Apostles' Creed or praying the Lord's Prayer. And so if you're interested, please just send me a message with your uh, voice recording of the Apostles' Creed or Lord's Prayer, and we'll be just overjoyed to add you to the service and have you be a part of it, and, and we'll definitely be blessed. All right, I think that's all for the announcements for today. Um, so uh, let's just get ready to go into the service by putting our hands together, bowing our heads, and uh, and starting with prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you uh, for Palm Sunday. Thank you for this day where uh, Jesus entered Jerusalem uh, to be a king. Uh, he is the king, um, and to be recognized as the king. Uh, but today we're going to see that some people didn't... Uh, uh, may may have not, most likely not have the right view of him. But today, we can see uh, Jesus as the King who brings peace uh, between us and you, and uh, and we just want to give so much thanks and glory uh, to Christ. And so, thank you, God, so much for sending your one and only Son, and help us to see today this true message, and just to see uh, what Jesus. Uh, how we view Jesus and how important it is to have that view. And so, Lord, uh, may this service worship you. May this message worship you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Today we are going to go into two different passages that uh, relate to Palm Sunday. Uh, so we're going to Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. And then we're going to jump to Luke chapter 19, Verses 39 to 40, all right? So Mark chapter 11, 1 to 10, and then Luke 19, 39 to 40. And it reads as this. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever written. written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord needs it and we'll, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there said, asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks over it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And then we jump to Luke 19, 39 to 40, where it says, Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus responds, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. 
Uh, this is God's word for us today. Um, and so I know we've been living in unprecedented, meaning unique and first time times with COVID-19. And we may <laughs> ourselves be suffering from it or know someone who is suffering from uh, this virus or what the virus is causing all of us to do or not to do in some way or form. Uh, we or they could be suffering from the actual virus, uh, loss of money and jobs because of the lockdowns, uh, loss of education and school because of those lockdowns again, um, and, and as well as the quality of education through just online uh, or long periods of online instead of in-person learning. And there's also a loss of freedom. I'm sure that we've all experienced uh, we weren't able to meet our friends or to play uh, as freely as we should want to be want to um, and, and to meet up with them. And for goodness sake, some of us haven't been to church for now over a year uh, to, to see our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And then some of us may be facing loneliness, boredom or even fear. And many of us can come to Jesus and yell, yell, save us now from COVID-19. The Lord could do that. But what would mostly happen is that the pandemic sickness uh, will go on. And thankfully, we have the vaccine out right now. We hope that things will get back uh, to more of a normal way once everyone has gotten their shot. Uh, but until then, it will continue and we're now in a third wave. Um, and sometimes we have this expectation of Jesus uh, to save us from suffering all the time. And when Jesus doesn't right away or at all, uh, then some of us might think that Jesus is not God or doubt his power and ability to save us from suffering or uh, from COVID-19 or just suffering in general and problems in our lives. We can feel that Jesus is letting us down and we have this expectation or view of him because, you know, he, uh, he's God, right? And, and, and we think, oh, we should, we should, everything should be okay. Everything should be right. Um, and a lot of times when we have these expectations, we become like some or many of the people during Jesus' time as we look at today's passage. And at this event, Jesus comes in days before the Passover uh, festival, and people see the Savior and treat him like a king, and they expect something from him. And that was to save them from the Romans and to save them from the oppression and the bullying of the Romans. But Jesus came to save them from their sins. And a lot of people, or almost everyone, did not know that. They didn't have that expectation of Jesus to save them from the sins, but they did have the expectation to save them uh, from the Romans uh, and from the oppression and bullying, I said before. They even cried, Hosanna. Uh, do you know what Hosanna means? Do you? It's not just, <laughs> it's a, there might be someone with the name Hosanna, but do, do you know what the actual word means, with Hosanna? 10 billion points if you get it. It means save us or save us now. Uh, and we can cry, Hosanna, save us, God, now. Uh, and, and, that, that's, and, that, and that's what the people were arguably you know, referring to, is to save us from the Romans, not to save us from our sins. They gave Jesus the red carpet treatment as he entered Jerusalem. Uh, they placed their cloaks and palm branches before their Savior and had this expectation and thought that he would save them again from the Romans and bring in a new age of victory and freedom from their rule. And you would think that the Romans would stop this celebration since they had soldiers and guards posted in Jerusalem uh, of this possible new king that might take it over, but instead they didn't. And the reason why the Romans didn't act was because they just thought it was all part of their festival. They didn't really know what Passover was. They might have heard of it. And they just knew, oh, it's a, some sort of festival today. Uh, and they just thought it was just this big party and ceremony and leading to the Passover. So they just let it happen. And so before Jesus entered Jerusalem, 
Uh, he got his disciples to get a donkey and a colt and a donkey so that he can send a message as he is riding in. Because a lot of them, like I said, had this expectation of, of Jesus. And the message that he wanted to send, that Jesus wanted to send, was that uh, a king riding a donkey into a city uh, meant not war or getting rid of the Romans, but meant peace. If a kid rode in on a horse or a war horse, it would mean war. And so let, let, let's look at these two pictures and tell me which one looks like one that is coming for peace and which one is coming to make war. Which one do you think? Well, obviously it's the one on the donkey. Uh, so if Jesus is riding in on a donkey, it showed a message that he is the king that did not come to fight um, the Romans, but make peace. Peace with the Romans? No. But peace between who? Peace between us and God. This is the message he wanted to show as he rode on the donkey. However, the people did not get that message. As the week unfolds, it becomes more apparent that Jesus was not about freeing them from the Romans. Jesus did not meet the expectations of the people because the people had their own view of a Messiah and Savior and King instead of the Messiah, Savior and King that the Old Testament foretold. And when Jesus later in the week gets arrested, tried and put on the cross, the cheers that once greeted him as he entered Jerusalem turns into cries for his crucifixion and death. When someone does not meet our expectations, it can be a letdown and disappointment. And I may have sh shared this before, but a lot of the times we have our expectations up here. And then what ends up happening is that reality is here. This is what actually happens, but we expected this to happen. Okay, up here and reality, this is what actually happens. And everything in between is disappointment. All right, disappointment. So if your expectations was high, but the reality of what just happened was really low, and then everything in between the space becomes disappointed, disappointment. And a lot of times it could be because we have the wrong view or the wrong information. And in this case, it's absolutely true. They have the wrong information. Um, you know, some of us uh, may think of the, you know, for for example, the COVID-19 vaccine shot. Uh, it may, if, once we get the shot, we may have our expectations of we're never going to get COVID again and we're going to be cured. And, but the reality is, is that it's going to, yes, it will protect us. Um, like not some up to 95%, but then there's also different types of COVID now, COVID-19 or variants of it that they say, and it may not protect us fully from the symptoms, but, uh, and so when we say, if we did get sick, we're going to be like, oh, low disappointment. I thought it would, you know, I'll be immune to it. I thought I'll be invincible to COVID if I get the vaccine and your expectations here, but the reality is actually here. And so you can actually probably still get sick, maybe. And what happens is that if you do, you might get disappointed. All right. And, and, and another example would be like something more simple is I, I know we haven't been to Canada's Wonderland in a while, but I remember I rode on the Yukon Striker for the very first time uh, when it first came out. Um, and my expectations was here. But when you actually look at the Yukon Strike, it's just like, it's like a big roller coaster, but it's just like any other big roller coaster, really. Uh, and so, but I don't know, my expectations were really high for some reason. But visually, it, yeah, it, it looked like just any, like any other roller coaster. But my expectations for some reason was so high. But then when I wrote it, the reality was probably around here. Okay, it was like, it was nice, it was fun, but it wasn't, it didn't hit my expectations. So I was a little disappointed. Okay. And, it's, it's because maybe I didn't have the right view of it or it got hyped up or something like that. Um, and so, yes, that's what happens. And that's what happened to the people because they had the wrong expectation of Jesus, not just a different one, but just a wrong one. And later we find that uh, 
Jesus did something that was beyond anything the people were expecting at that time. He did not come to save them again from Roman rule, but to save them from a darker kingdom, to save them from sin and the kingdom of Satan. And this is why the donkey was mentioned. Uh, and one reason to show that Jesus is the real deal, but also to show that Jesus is coming in humbleness and Prince of Peace uh, and to make peace between God and man. Uh, he fulfills the prophecy of Zechariah 9.9, where it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. All right. And that was to, uh, Jesus did that to fulfill that and to come in peace, to make peace. Jesus rode in as the King of Kings who was going to save us from the greatest threat and our greatest disease. Far, it's, and, it, and this greatest disease is far greater than COVID-19, far greater than cancer or any other disease or war or, uh, this, or, or climate change or no fairness in life, problems with family, death, loneliness, fear, uh, mean tweets or comments on your Facebook page or whatever page. Um, I think you guys are too young to have Facebook, but yes, um, <laughs> that's, uh, it's, it's far, a far greater threat Jesus came to save us from, uh, than any of those. And Jesus again came to make peace between us and God and to save us from the darkness of sin. And we expect Jesus to save now for some reason. And we might have this expectation for Jesus to save us now uh, from many things uh, that doesn't um, meet our expectations. But did he come to save us just from suffering or boredom or fear of a nightmare uh, or um, this time of COVID and, and give us a life of riches, uh, of, of health, and a life free of suffering? Did, did Jesus come to f give us that now? No, uh, he came to do something greater. And that's and, and, and we see that. And we see it on the cross through his resurrection and his ascension when he rose to sit at now the right hand of God the Father. We can come to him and yell, Hosanna, save us now from sin. And Jesus can and will save anybody that yells Hosanna to save us now from sin. Jesus is coming on a donkey to make peace with you, with me. Will we bring out the red carpet and palm branches for him for the right reasons? How will you respond? I pray that we can respond by saving, saying Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sins, because Jesus, that's what you came to do. Uh, and, and that we can say, forgive me of my sins. And Jesus, I believe in you, and I want to follow you. Thank you for the cross, the resurrection, the ascension. Thank you for all that. And I hope we can respond in that way and live in that response. And I hope that not only you can respond that way today, but uh, the people around you, and in order for them to respond, they would need to uh, have you share the message and good news of Jesus Christ and what he did uh, and what, what we're celebrating this week. Because right now, Jesus is coming to us on a donkey to make peace. But one day when Jesus returns, he won't be on a donkey anymore, but we'll be on a war horse. In Revelation 19, 11 to 16, it says, I saw heaven standing open, there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword which, with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robes and on his thigh, he, uh, he has his name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords.
That's how Jesus is going to come the second time. Not on a donkey, but on a war horse. And so let's be moved to respond to God with his offer of peace through Jesus before Jesus returns again. Because when Jesus returns, we will either be filled with joy or terror, depending on whether we have peace with him or not. If we have peace with him, we're going to be filled with joy when we see the sight of our glorious king riding in on that war, war horse. But if we don't have peace with him, it's going to be a vision of terror because Jesus is, will come back to wage war. And um, But for now, he comes on a donkey to bring peace between us and God. And I hope we can share that message with others on this Palm Sunday to let them know that Jesus comes to make peace between them and God. And so this is today's message uh, for us today. And I believe uh, Carmen is going to be closing us. Teacher Carmen is going to be closing us in a word of prayer. I hope everybody has a great Sunday. And, you know, let's praise God um, for sending his son to bring, again, peace between us and God. So have a happy Sunday. Hey everyone, let's close in prayer. Hands together, eyes closed, head bowed. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your message today. In fact, thank you for allowing us to hear your word so freely and so openly and uh, so comfortably as well. But God, I pray that today's message may stick to our hearts as your judgment is not something so comfortable, but is something so important. And Lord, I pray that as we all step into our new week, may you remind us of who you are and who we are in you so that we may come to love you, to praise you, and to thank you for everything that you've blessed us. We pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.